please flank me with your prayers. Luke chapter 10, verses 38. I'm going to read just a few verses into your hearing. If you need a blessing this morning, say, Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. For your servant is listening. Amen. Amen. Pray for me silently, beloved. Notice what your Bible says, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Translation. Verse number 38. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to the word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations, and she, became, she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. <laughs> Martha got some nerve, don't she? <laughs> That's the last thing I would have told the Lord. Right. Last two verses. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. Mm -hmm. But only one thing is necessary. Everybody yes. shout necessary. necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Is that in your personal copies this morning? I want you to find a neighbor that you like and look at him and smile at him. You can't, if you don't like that one, just look at the other one. Amen. Find one you like. Find one you like. <laughs> Look at him in enthusiasm and say, Neighbor! Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor! Your blessing, your blessing. is on the way. Oh, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Your, your blessing is on the way, neighbor. On the way. Your blessing is on the way. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there are some things in life that you must admit that we are certainly attracted to. That's true. Sometimes those things that we are attracted to end up being distractions because they catch us off guard and distract us. You're supposed to be working on a project, but you receive 20 Facebook notifications. They say amen when you can. And before you know it, you've lost 20 minutes and instead of, uh, instead of being on Facebook, you were supposed to have your face in the book. But you got distracted. Brothers, when you see a fine sister, brothers, y'all all right? Brothers, when you see a fine sister, your eyes can take your mind somewhere. It should not be. Brothers are so quiet right through here. Um, but don't allow your eyes to take your mind somewhere. Allow your mind to take your eyes elsewhere. Story is told of a young brother who was struggling with his flesh, and he asked an older gentleman, much older gentleman, he said, Sir, um, at what point of your life did you stop looking at all the pretty ladies? And uh, the older, older gentleman said, you know, son, I understand what you're saying. I've been there before, and I understand what you're talking about. He said, for me, it was around 83 years old. <laughs> and the young brother was confused. He said, so, so what happened at 83? Old man said to the young man, he said, son, that's when I started to go blind. <laughs> because we are attracted sometimes to distractions. Come on, sisters, when you see a handsome brother, you almost spill your coffee. Woo! Trying to find out who that brother was. Even at church, there's always a little child that's about two or three rows in front of you. And you feel like that one child is just staring at you the whole time. They just turn back and looking at you. And you know what you do? You, 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 you smile and you wave and you make a little facial gestures and you done lost 20 minutes of my sermon. <laughs> Say amen when you can. If you can't say amen, you say ouch. Yeah, we can't do anything sometimes because we're attracted to distractions. So if you did a sermon title this morning, it would simply be attracted to distractions. I want to post a question to the mental timeline of your life and of your mind. Are you attracted to distractions? Are you attracted 
to distractions. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was on his way to Jerusalem, he had an encounter with two sisters who can help us out with our distractions. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can find these two sisters in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Jesus encountered two sisters who both had priorities. Everybody shout priorities. Priorities. Priority is that which is regarded more important than another thing. Amen, somebody. Amen. That both of these sisters had priorities, but they just had their priorities in different places. Right. I want you to know that the Bible says in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 38 that as Jesus and those who were accompanying him were traveling, they came to a village and they were welcomed into the home of a woman by the name of Martha. Everybody shout Martha. Martha. I want you to know that Martha was a homeowner. Martha welcomed Jesus into her home and she was making some preparation so that they could eat some food. So now you know that her priority was to prepare a meal for the Lord. Amen, somebody. She was focused. She had been down to Whole Foods. Amen, somebody. She went to Publix and she went to Kroger and she had all of the fixtures there for the master because the master was in town and she wanted the master to come inside her home. So she had her carpet uh, vacuumed. Amen, somebody. Had the floors mopped. Had the refrigerator full. Had already thought, thought out all the meat. Sisters, y'all not shout good. Y'all not saying nothing in here. Come on in here, somebody. You know how it is when you want to invite somebody in your home. You want the house to be spotless, amen, somebody. You want the food to be good. You want to kind of impress them, amen, church. And that's what Martha was doing. But she noticed she had a sister by the name of Mary. But Mary was focused and her priority was to sit at the feet of Jesus and she was listening to him. Could you imagine if you take a look at, at the imagery of this passage in this pericope of scripture here, Jesus came to their home. Come on. Jesus, the door of your front door is open and Jesus is at your house. I want to explain this in three different categories. The first one is the experience uh, the second one is the exhortation. Well, that's the actually that's the actual third one. The second one is the exclusion. Uh -huh. So you got first of all the experience, the exclusion, yeah. and you have the exhortation. Now this is the experience that these women are having because Jesus is in the house of Martha. She is a homeowner. Okay. She welcomed him. She had a sister by the name of Mary, but Martha was distracted with all of her. Preparations. Mary actually prioritized the word. But Martha prioritized the hot wings with ranch and blue cheese. Come on in here, church. Mary prioritized the principles and the precepts while she was listening to Jesus. But Martha prioritized the pots and the pans. Mary, Martha was preparing to feast uh, on the food for the stomach, but Mary was preparing to feast on the food for the soul. Yeah. Can I tell you that Mary got the real soul food? All right. yeah. Not the physical stuff. Ain't yeah. it, somebody? Yeah. Mary was sitting at his feet listening. She says, I want this real soul food. My sister's up in the kitchen. She's doing her thing, but I got the real soul food at his feet, listening to the words that were dripping off the tongue Woo. of Jesus. Come on. She was happy with her posture. So that's the experience that these two sisters had who both had separate priorities. Let me show you the exclusion. Everybody shout exclusion. exclusion. Now if you notice Luke chapter 10 and verse number 40, things become quite interesting uh, when you survey and study uh, this passage. You will find once you get over there that as Martha was preparing the food, she got distracted because the Bible says, but Martha was distracted with all her preparations. She was distracted with what? All of her preparation. Uh, the word distracted comes from an original Greek term 
perispeo, and it means to be drawn out, to be drawn away. Now, Jesus is in her living room, but she's distracted and drawn away from the food stuff and the preparations instead of the master. Jesus, let me get it to you one more time. Let me be right and press pray here. Jesus is in her living room, but she can't focus on Jesus because she got to go check on the food. Are y'all in here this morning? So the Bible says that she was distracted means that she was drawn away from Jesus. But Mary was sitting there listening to his feet. Just in case there are a few of you Bible readers who've forgotten, this is the same Mary that you will find in John chapter 11 where John says she was the brother of Lazarus. She was from Bethany, Mary had a sister by the name of Martha. This is the same Mary that in Luke chapter 7 that you must understand that came to Jesus while he was at the house of a Pharisee and brought a vial of alabaster or perfume over there to anoint his feet. And she was behind Jesus and she was trying to cry on his her tears on his feet because the Bible says that this is the same Mary that was a sinner. Let me bring this thing home. When you are a sinner and Jesus is in your living room, you don't have time for pork chops. You don't have time for steaks because you got a bigger problem. Amen, somebody. This is the same one that was crying on the feet of Jesus in the house of a Pharisee that used her hair to wipe his feet. She had the alabaster box and a vial, which is a vial of perfume that she gave the master because she knew that Jesus could fix the problem that nobody else could fix, which was her sin problem. And when you come to church, beloved, why don't y'all smile on this morning? If you know you got a sin problem, you need to be listening to the words of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Because you got a problem that only Jesus can fix, but Martha was distracted. Everybody shout distracted. distracted. Have you ever been distracted before? Amen, somebody. So Mary was a woman that was kissing the feet of Jesus. This is that same Mary. Amen, somebody. So it's important because the devil will distract you. Am I right about it? Take your focus your faith and your future away through distractions. The devil wants to take your focus away on the main event. See, see, Mary was focused on the entree, which is the word, but Martha was focused on the appetizers. See, the entree is more important than the appetizers. Amen, somebody. And I'm talking about spiritual food here. Amen, somebody. And I teach a concept that I like to call saturation. Okay. Everybody shout saturation. saturation. Anybody like condiments on food? Yeah. Anybody like ketchup on french fries? Yeah. Ranch on french fries? Some of y'all baptize your baked potatoes every time you eat them. Amen, somebody. You can't even see no baked potato because you got so much ranch and all that stuff on there. Amen, somebody. Can I tell you something that will help you out in your life? I'm so happy you're at church. What will help you out is if you saturate your mind with God's word. Saturate your mind with Bible verses. Saturate your mind with, by, with singing. Amen, somebody. Saturate your mind with what the word of God says. You have to put good stuff and spiritual stuff in so that good stuff and spiritual stuff will come out. Amen, somebody. Because there's a principle. What you put in is what's going to come out. So if you put demonic, amen, somebody, unspiritual, negative things in your spirit, demonic, negative, and unspiritual things will come out. Am I right about it? So you got to make sure you are careful with what you put in your spirit. Anybody ever slipped up and cussed? <laughs> Some of y'all this morning, praise God. <laughs> Trying to get your kids to church, and they just wouldn't do it. Y'all better come on in here. Lord have mercy. Now, you may not have said it verbally, but you may have said it in your mind. You still curse. Look at your neighbor and say, You still curse. Go ahead. You, you didn't verbalize it, but you said it in your mind. Mercy, Lord. 
Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? This, this, this may blow your mind. You never slip and accidentally say anything. That's right. See, see, your heart speaks from that which has filled it. Your heart speaks from that which it's filled with. So if you pour cursing and curse words in your heart, that's what your heart is filled with. Amen, somebody. So you never slip and accidentally say anything because when your heart speaks, it is overflowing with that which is filled with. But if you fill your heart with positive words, amen, somebody, Bible verses, and having a little talk with Jesus, when something, something comes up in your life, those things will come out. Amen, somebody. Uh, you better be careful when you watch power. All right. I know it's good. I know it's good. But you better be careful. Years ago, one of my fraternity brothers, I don't know if y'all, for you young people, you know this, but when Rick Ross first came out, he used to talk about how he was the biggest boss. A good friend of mine had went to Publix Grocery Store, and it was about two minutes until 10 when they closed. And, and the manager had all, was already locked. You know how they locked the doors right, right at 10? He met somebody. And the manager said, you can't come in, sir. And my friend looked at him, he said, I don't know who, who you think you're talking to. He said, but I'm a boss. See, he was listening to Rick Ross. Y'all not helping me in here. And he thought he was somebody because Rick Ross says he was somebody. Are y'all all right? So you got to be careful with what you put in your spirit because those things will surely and certainly come out. So you got to saturate your mind. That's why I'm so thankful for the church because you can come here and saturate your mind with the word. Saturate your mind with singing. Get a double portion with the evening service. Amen, somebody. Amen. Meet a week Bible class and saturate your mind so that the right things will come out of your mind and in your spirit. So that's what Mary was doing. Because if you're not careful, you can spend so much emotional energy on the wrong things. Have you ever been so mad about something that did not go your way? didn't go the way you thought it should have gone. Maybe you turned to CNN and found out there was something going on politically that you didn't agree with. And you was fussing and going on and mad and or your team just did not win. Amen, somebody. You know how frustrated people get when the stuff that they want to happen does not happen and you end up talking about it and your blood pressure gets high. Amen, somebody. And you're mad because your team lost yesterday and you're mad because this didn't happen and all of a sudden you have all of this emotional energy that you have exerted on something that does not even matter. Now you don't even have enough emotional energy to do the things that are actually important that do matter. Am I the only one in here? You got so mad at the game and so mad at politics and so mad at this situation, by the time you had exerted all that energy arguing and fussing and fighting about that, you had no time to do your work. Somebody saying, what are you supposed to be doing this? And you said, man, I'm tired, man. The <laughs> reason why you're tired is because you're wasting your emotional energy in something that does not matter in God's grand scheme of things. Preach, boy. I'm trying to help somebody on this morning. Because what we do is we waste physical energy on people, places, problems, and predicament. You need me to rewind and pause and press play. Here it is. People, places, problems, and predicaments, peers, and promotions. We waste our time on things that do not matter. Now we don't have the energy to focus on the things that actually do. Because Mary was listening to the word and the word is the seed. And if there is no seed planted, then your faith cannot grow. Seed has to be planted for your faith to grow. Because the Bible teaches us in Romans 10, 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. Amen, somebody. Hearing is a participle that denotes continuous action, so it, it will presuppose that faith does not come after you have heard once. Right. Come faith comes by hearing, hearing. morning, 
evening, weekly. Come on in here, somebody. You got to keep hearing it. All of a sudden, the light bulb will go off and you'll finally understand what the Lord was trying to do through his word. Amen, somebody. So the seed has to be planted. And Mary knew that because once you hear, then you could develop faith. And then once you have trials and tribulations, then you can develop a testimony. Then once you have a testimony about what God has done, it strengthens your relationship with the Lord. And then you can keep that relationship with the Lord so that you can make it to heaven. But it starts with the seed planted through the word. Amen, somebody. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Physical food just can't do it. You got to have it, but you got to get that spiritual food. Anybody here ever been in a place in your life before where you were hanging by the word? You didn't have nothing but a prayer in his word. Everything you try, nothing else would work. You try to kill something, wouldn't nothing die. Amen, somebody. You just were hanging on the prayer and hanging on the word of God. And the only thing that got you through that situation was God's word and God's promises and God's precepts. Amen, somebody. It was God's word. I'm thankful for God's word, beloved. God's word is powerful. God's word is plain. God's word is persuasive yes, and God's word is everlasting. Yes, and so what you have to realize is that uh, Martha excluded a part of Jesus' encounter with her because she was focused on the wrong things. She was distracted. And when you have distractions, distractions can waste time yes. off of your life. One thing about money is you can always get money again. But you can't get back that time. Are y'all in here? I said you can get money again, but you cannot get time back. That's why time is something that you should never waste. And the devil knows that because the devil will distract you with something. He will distract you with people you like. And all of a sudden, you're talking to somebody you like for 30 minutes, and guess what? You have gotten distracted. I wish I had a witness up in here from doing your job and what God wanted you to do. You can get so distracted, you don't take your blood pressure medication. Come on, preacher. And then now your blood pressure is up. He missed somebody. You better make sure you understand the devil's vices. That's why I'm so That's thankful right. that we announced the Family and Friends Day because we plan to help you out on next week so that you could understand that. So people get distracted from the word of God, which is the only thing that could save us, which is the only thing if we believe in it and have faith that could help us get to heaven once we are obedient to God's word. Amen, somebody. And let me pause parenthetically and put some sermonic hot sauce on this point. Are y'all all right? Sisters, be careful. Uh, sisters, y'all all right? Y'all got quiet right through that. Praise God, praise God. People can be distractions. Sisters, don't get so distracted and make a man your head who has not made Christ his head. Is it there yet? Because we get distracted by looks and swagger. But swagger can't pay bills. Lord, have mercy. But you like it and you're distracted by it. The Bible says in Genesis 2 7 that the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. What are you doing, God? I'm forming a man from dirt. <laughs> Come here, sisters. Are y'all praying with me, sisters? I'm, I'm trying to bless your life. Based on the verse I just quoted you, tells us that God is the only one that knows how to make a man from dirt. marinate for a minute right there. <laughs> Lead that to God. He's the only one that can make something out of dirt. <laughs> 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 
So I gave you the experience. <laughs> I gave you uh, the experience in the first point. I gave you the exclusion mm -hmm. because Martha excluded the best thing to do. But Mary prioritized it. And let me give you the exhortation. Notice how Martha had the audacity to come to Jesus and say, Lord, do you not care about all that I am doing with these preparations? And while my sister just sits there and listens to your word. Could, could, you, could you imagine being Jesus and hear her make a comment like that? Knowing that she doesn't get it? Amen, somebody. So you got to understand Jesus' response. Notice Luke 10 and how he tries to exhort. The word exhort just means to urge them. Uh, let's go back up to verse number 40. The Bible says, but Martha was distracted with all her preparations and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care? And my sister has left me to do all the serving. Tell, then tell her to, to help me. <laughs> Jesus, it's food over here. I need my sister to leave your feet from listening to your word and come over here and get these grits. <laughs> How idiotic that sounds. Like, Jesus, I don't want her listening to you. I want her listening to see when this oven gonna be ready so we can get this cornbread on, on the road, okay? Then she had the nerve to ask a question don't, don't you care? Don't you care she's sitting there listening to your word? Notice Jesus' response. Watch this, watch this. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, play, play. <laughs> sister girl, sister girl. Can you just see Jesus? When Jesus called your name twice, it's always serious. <laughs> Simon, Simon. In other words, you can just, you can feel the disgust from where Martha's heart was in terms of what Jesus knew it should have been. Martha, Come he's on. frustrated, Martha. Ma you can hear him say it, Martha, Martha. You can just see the scrunched up face on Jesus. Martha, Martha, come on. Uh, Y'all all right? I'm just walking through the text this morning. That's all I'm doing. I'm just walking through the text. I'm gonna drop you off at the, at the invitation in just a moment. But he says, Martha, Martha. You are worried and bothered by so many things. The word worried means you are anxious. The word uh, uh, bothered is also translated to King James uh, to, to mean troubled. You are worried and troubled about so many things. And I'm just surmised and deduced that there are two or three of you who walked in here today. You're just bothered, amen, somebody, and worried and troubled and anxious about so many things. I wish I had five people that could give me a wave of hands and amen and say, preacher, you're right down my alley. I came in this morning with a worry. I came in being troubled by something. I came in being bothered by something. I, ho I was hoping that the Lord would put something on your lips to give me to help me with my situation. I'm just like Martha. I'm worried about too many things. I'm just like Martha. I'm bothered about too many things. I'm just like Martha. I'm troubled with what's going on. Amen, somebody. He said, Martha, you, you, you're worried, you're troubled about too many things. You, 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 you're worried. Some, some of you here today are worried and troubled about the light bill. You're troubled about what's going on with your child. and he's, Your child is going wild and all these things are going on with your grandchildren. Amen, somebody. And for some reason, your check just is never right. Amen, somebody. And when you get your bank statement, you feel like the bank taking money because you thought you should have had at least $200. I wish I had somebody in here. $200 more than what you see on your bottom line. Some just not adding up right in your father and you're worried about all of these things. And those things can take your mind away from the word of God. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know how it is because, you know, I, I, I too can understand when you have 
phone call that you get and people that you love and people that you are concerned about and people that you're worried about and all these things are going on that are beyond your control, beyond what you're able to do, beyond what you can even understand that you need to do. Come on and hear somebody. And sometimes those things are on your mind, but the lesson is that we don't get distracted by those things and focus on what the word of the Lord says and what God is able to do. See, she wanted, see, Martha wanted to impress Jesus with her preparations uh -huh. instead of doing like Mary, instead of investing in his reparations. Yeah. Of all the things that you could be doing, uh -huh. you need to know that Jesus is exhorting us. He is urging yeah. us to make the main thing the main thing. Yeah. And that is the word of God. How often do you read your Bible? Amen. How often do you crack open your Bible or your electronic device? How often do you take seriously the things that are in the Word of God into your life to apply to your life? Amen, somebody. I don't know about you, but you, you have to apply the Word of God. Anybody in here got dry skin by a show of waving hands and amens? Some of y'all are just scared right now to shout you. You, you may need some lotion right now. Amen, somebody. You, you're just saying, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not my head. I got dry skin, my wife will tell you. And you could have all the lotion in your house that you want. You could have a gallon of lotion under your kitchen table, under your cubby, wherever you keep your lotion. Amen, somebody. But once you take a shower, unless you go and get that lotion and apply that to your skin, you're still going to have, have dry skin. I could use another word. You're still going to be ashy. <laughs> Say amen when you can. But the lotion is available, but the lotion just needs to be applied. The word of God is available. It just needs to be applied. Amen, somebody. We got to get the church uh, to develop beyond hearing it. We have to get the church to take notes arm yourself with a writing instrument and actually say I'm going to do what the Bible says to do and when you do what the Bible says to do you'll start noticing changes in your life changes in your attitude instead of having a, a frown you'll start having a smile what used to get you can't get you no more because you're walking with Jesus amen somebody you're talking with Jesus amen church and you don't let nothing bother you because because you're hanging on the word of God. What used to get you won't get you. When you got that word front and center, you got to meditate on the word. Can I tell you something? Uh, the word gives you information. And let's not be naive to the fact that information causes an emotional change in your life. Let me give you an example. When you, when you get some good news about some money, all of a sudden you put on a smile. You're happy. You start making a list of things you're going to use that money to purchase or to save. Am I right about it? But when you get some bad news, it changed. That information, those words, words are, are powerful. Words are important. It changes your whole disposition. All of a sudden, you went from being happy to sad. Because words are important. And words affect us emotionally. And it just seems to me in this text that Mary knew that. She knew that if I listen to Jesus' words. It will change my emotional state. It will make me stronger. It will make me happier. I can focus. I can feel free. I can think about my future. I'm talking to the resurrection. Amen, somebody. All the things that are burdens in my life and burdens on my heart do not matter when I'm listening to the words of Jesus. In Jesus, I find hope. In Jesus, I find comfort. In Jesus, I find consolation. In Jesus, I know my future is safe and secure, away from all alone, so I can be leaning. Amen, somebody. On Jesus, I can be leaning 
all of Jesus, amen, somebody, safe and secure from all alarms, amen, somebody. Why? Because Mary understood the power of words. She understood the power of how words change your emotional state. How you can have strength in your shoulders when you hear bad words and bad news and makes you slump over and feel weak and your uh, legs feel like jelly. But when you get some good, powerful words that are encouraging, all of a sudden your shoulders get square. You start to lift your head up. You start saying something, ain't nothing going to happen to me. I'm going to be all right. God is on my side. I'm rolling with Jesus. He brought me this far. He's never let me down. He didn't let my daddy down. He didn't let my mama down. He's always been in my house. We worship the Lord. Then you'll start telling the devil stuff like that. Anybody beside me have to rebuke the devil all the time and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me. Amen, somebody. Why? Why? Because you're always under attack. Do we know that? Yes. Where it didn't matter how smart or how good and how, how well you have intended to do certain things, even spiritually. Yes. He is after everybody. Yes. You got to know that. Yes. See, he went after you when you were in the world. Right. Because he already had you. Right. Right. But once you got into the church, every day this. Every day that. Problem over here. Problem over here. Demonic stuff over here. Demonic stuff over there. And all the time we got an issue after issue. You need the word of God. Mary was smart. Amen somebody. She said I'm listening to the I'm at his feet. I'm there. I want to hear what he has to say because what he has to say will sustain me. There's power in words. Amen somebody. Jesus even said in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 42 but only one thing is necessary are y'all in here Jesus response was there's only one thing that is necessary after Martha approached him and said Lord don't you care tell her to come over here and help me Jesus threw a flag on the plate called the time out and said there's only one thing that's necessary. Amen, somebody. Amen. And that's what Mary is doing. Is that not in your Bible, church? There's only one thing that is necessary. And Mary is doing that. He says, Mary has chosen the good part. Everybody shout good part. The good part is what Mary chose. So your question should be, what did Mary choose? Mary chose to be at the feet of Jesus. Listening to his words. Y'all know we like the good part, right? And this is what Jesus is saying. Have you ever been eating some food, but you didn't like the, the edges all around it? So you just, you didn't like the end of the, the butt of the bread? Come on in here, somebody. You, there was some you didn't like, but you liked another portion of it. So you just removed that particular part, and you got to the good part. Oh, let me, y'all making my sermon longer. Um, gotta act like you're getting this stuff to me so I can move on. I gotta close. All right, here it is. Have you ever liked a song, but there's a part that you did like? But there was a part that you loved because it was relative to your situation? So you were fast forward to the good. Sure they not, to the good part. Ain't that somebody? You love color purple. But the part when Mr. was mistreating Miss Seeley bothered you so bad, you fast forward because you was ready to get to the <laughs> to the good part. He missed somebody. So Jesus said, Mary has chosen the good part. Watch this. Which shall never be taken away from her. Amen, somebody. She prioritized the good part that she would never, ever have taken away from her. There's so many good parts of the word of God. Jesus would even say in Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my 
thy yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your soul. That's the good part. Amen somebody. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. John chapter 14 and verse number 1. Somebody shout this is the good part. <clears throat> Let your heart not be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, that you may be also. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9. I have not seen, nor ear heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the good things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them in heaven. I will forgive their sin and they will heal their land. Amen, somebody. That's the good part. See, the bad part is what we go through in our lives. But when we have the word of God, that's the good part that's going to sustain you that will never leave you. Amen, somebody. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse number 8, you remember this, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. That's the good part. And that's the part that will keep us. I don't know how people make it without church. See, see, when you come to church, can I tell you what happens as I close before we go, before we go uh, to the invitation? Can I tell you what happens? When you come to church, this is how awesome God is. I have not been to your house. I don't know anything. So once one sister says thank you, amen, somebody. Um, I don't know what you're dealing with in your life. That's right. But God always puts on the preacher's heart that every individual needs to be said to them, needs to hear, needs to listen to. And you say, Brother Jones, how did you know? I didn't. I don't have to. Because God knows how to give you the good part when you come to church. Amen, somebody. Go ahead and give him some praise right now. Tell him thank you for the good part. Amen, somebody. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the good part. Amen, amen. And as I close, here's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants his followers to prioritize that which is necessary. The word necessary in that verse means needful. What you need. In other words, Jesus is saying, Mary has prioritized that which she needs. What you need. That is necessary. Yeah. What's necessary is not all the preparations being right, perfect. Right. What's necessary is that you understand the power of the word of yeah. God. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. What's necessary is that you understand what God is trying to yeah. do yeah. through his word. Right. That's what's necessary. And that's what Jesus considers and calls the good part. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Even in ministry, we need to know this. Yes, because sir. we get so distracted yeah. by everything. Yeah. And we're attracted to distractions. Yes. We're attracted to distractions. Yes. Let me tell you something about ministry as I close. Ministry is so awesome, but you got to understand that we get so distracted about the planning. We get so distracted with the decision making and who's going to do this and who's going to do that and who came up with the plan. It can even be some food stuff. Who cooked the macaroni? Amen, somebody. And we get so caught up in the ministry stuff that we forget to minister. We forget that it's not about the macaroni. It is not about just the clothes. It is about the souls. So we have so many people in church that get so engulfed and so entrenched and so enthralled into the process of ministry, we forget to do the actual ministry that saves souls through the gospel of Jesus the Christ. We get so caught up into the nuts and bolts that we forget this person not even saved. But because we get an opportunity to plan it. We're on the committee.
I find myself having through here. We make it all about lording over something. And we miss the opportunity to minister. Are y'all all right? Because we got attracted to distraction. And the devil knows things about us. Make it about the souls. Everything that we give away at this church, we want to help people out with their needs, but we also want to tell them about Jesus. We want to give you some clothes, but we want to tell you about Jesus. We'll give you some food, but we want to tell you about Jesus. We want to teach your kids, but we want to tell them about Jesus. Make the main thing the main thing. And the devil knows how we are because we do have some skills. We do have some gifts. We do have some talents. We do have some abilities. But it was never about you. And it was never about me. Look at your neighbor and tell him it was never about you. It's always been about God. Go ahead. I heard a long time ago that Jesus was the head of the church. Yes, he is. But I just realized it over the last 10 years. You can know one thing in terms of information. But functionally and practically, you can think that you the head. Oh, watch out. Ministry will teach you that. Mercy. So Jesus is still the head. There is no more power left. Amen, somebody. Because he has all power. Amen, somebody. So don't miss the big picture in ministry. It is all about souls. It's all about souls. I'm done. That's all I have for you. Praise God. I want us to make sure that we're not attracted to distractions. What's distracting you from the word? What's distracting you from applying the word? What's distracting you from coming? What's distracting you from being committed? What's distracting you from loving on your husband, loving on your wife, or loving on your family? What's distracting you? Whatever it is, you need to prioritize the good part. The part that matters, the part that will keep you, the part that will sustain you, and that is the word of God. And can I tell somebody, even on this morning, that the word of God teaches us that Jesus came and died so that we could be saved. Now, if you get everything else right and don't get that right, then you've missed the good part. And it's all about, it is all about going to heaven. You can be going to Cancun. You can be going on vacation. You can be going over here. And ain't nothing wrong with that. You can be going overseas. But if you ain't going to heaven... That's eternity. And so what God has done is created time because God exists and lives in eternity. He created time so that we could have some understanding about what's going on in life. But God is not bound by time because he lived in eternity where there is no time. But he created time for us. And you and I sometimes think that we have more time than what we actually have. And anytime we have an encounter with Jesus, because Jesus is in this house right now, yeah. and here's what Jesus is doing. Jesus has already provided his life. Yeah. He's provided his life, his sacrificial life through his death, yeah. through being hung on a cross, yeah. through being buried. But God had so much power that God raised Jesus yeah. from the dead after three days, never to die again. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Aren't you happy that he died for you? Yeah. Aren't you happy that he gave his life for you? Aren't you happy that you can live for eternity because of what he did? And that was his blood. Everybody shout blood, blood, blood. It is all about his blood. And somebody here today may be in this place and not be acquainted with our Jesus, not being acquainted with what you need to do to obey him, not being acquainted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's what Jesus says. All you need to do is believe that I hung, bled, and died for your sins, that I was buried, and I got up on the third day with all power in my hands, and I died so that you could be forgiven. That's what he did for you, and that's what he did for me. You must be willing to repent of your sins. Acts 2, 38, uh, Acts 3, 19, Acts, uh, Luke 17, 30 and 31, uh, 2 Peter uh, 3, 9. You got to repent. Everybody shout repent. Yeah. Repentance comes from the Greek term montaneo, and it means to have a change of mind. Repentance has nothing to do with what you say. It has everything to do with what you have changed your mind to do in terms of your behavior. 
saying you repent and actually repenting behaviorally are two different things. Are y'all all right? So Jesus says you must repent of your sins. Feel bad. Have godly sorrow. Then you must confess Jesus as being the son of the living God. In other words, make God smarter than you. Yes. Say, God, do you have the ability to create the heavens of the earth and the world and the universe, yes. put together a book so I can understand what your will is. I just believe that you know what it is that I need to do Amen. and just decide to believe that God said that Jesus is his son. And since God said he believed it and God did it, that you're going to believe that as well. Amen, somebody. Amen. And finally, the easiest part of being saved and having the good part is to be baptized Amen. for the remission, the forgiveness of all your sins. It is the best thing in the world right. to know that he loved me so much that all I have to do is obey Jesus because he died for me and get everything I've ever done forgiven. Do y'all understand how good the gospel is? You may not have a dollar to your name, but you are a spiritual billionaire. You got eternity. Forgiveness of sin, gift of the Holy Ghost, added to the church, all spiritual blessings. You could say I'm blessed, you could say I'm redeemed, you could say I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit. You got all that, amen, somebody, because you obey Jesus. The only relationship you need is a relationship with Jesus. Now I want you to have a relationship with everybody else. But you have to have a relationship with Jesus. And that's what Mary was doing. She prioritized her relationship with Jesus. At his feet, listening to his word. And, and if you're here today and you're a visitor, you may have said, well, I come dressed up to, you know, do this and do that. And you're so sharp, you're about to cut somebody because you're dressed up so nice and so good. And you smell so good. And you took a shower this morning, gave me somebody. And you had your outfit on your bed last night. And you knew exactly what you were going to wear to church because I got to come to church and I got to hear the word. But guess what? God wants you to obey him. So all you have to do to become a Christian, a child of God, is to be baptized today. And what baptism will do is we will put you under water for three seconds. And while you're under that water, God will use Jesus' blood to cleanse you from all of your sin. Amen. And after those three seconds are up, when you come back up, all of your sins will be already forgiven. Amen. You will have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You will be added to the church that Jesus died for. Amen. And all you have, you will have all spiritual blessings. And all you have to do is prioritize the good part. If you're here today, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. I believe there's one or two in here today. One or two in here today that needs to give your life to Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, so many have given their life to Jesus. It takes a strong man, a strong woman, a strong boy, a strong girl to walk out of their seat right now. Walk out of their seat and say, I'm willing to be baptized today. So I can get all my sins washed away. I can leave here a new person. Amen, somebody. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you have prioritized everything else except for the good part. And you need the prayers of the church. We're here to pray for you as well. I don't know who you are, where you are, what you got going on in your life. But this may be the last time you have an opportunity to do what you need to do. Are you willing to come right now? Who's, who's in here willing to come right now and say yes to Jesus? Is there anybody in here willing to come to Jesus right now and say, yes, I want to be baptized? I want to get it right. I, I know what I did before in the past, but I didn't understand it. I didn't really get a good, a good grasp of it. And I want to give my I want to make it official. I want to make it sure. I want to give my life to the Lord. Now is your time to come. Amen. You just start walking. If you need somebody to walk with you, you just raise your hand. And I'll come down there and get you. If you are a visitor here with us and somebody invited you to come, uh, I want you to ask your visitor right now, do you need me to walk down with you right now? We're going to sing a song right now. This song is not for you to necessarily sing. It's for you, if you're a visitor, it's for you to be encouraged to come down right now. To come down. If you're here, let the Lord move your heart right now as we stand together and sing a song of invitation.